On the basis that there remains still some upside on the markets before there's any meaningful correction, where should we be looking to invest? Tom Stevenson joins us now. He's Investment Director at Fidelity International. Um, just to describe the, the, the big picture about um, where we are at the beginning of 2018 and where we're looking to invest this year. Well, 2017 was a pretty stellar year for equity markets generally. I mean, we had rises across the board. Uh, the big winners were uh, emerging markets. Um, the laggard was probably uh, the UK. Um, we had other things on our mind. But broadly speaking, it didn't really matter where you invested in 2017. You would have done quite well uh, in equities. I think in 2018, maybe uh, investors will need to be a bit more discerning. I think, you know, they were well be some divergence between different regions. Well, let's just take a look at Europe first of all. You brought along a chart showing us uh, uh, some of the performances that we've seen. Um, it, it, this is obviously over, what, uh, 14, 15 years or so. Um, explain what's going on. So what this chart really shows is a pickup in sentiment. Uh, if, you, if you look back over the years since the financial crisis, obviously we had the sovereign debt crisis uh, that, that followed that, and you can see that dip in sentiment there. It's really beginning to pick up, and I think that you know, we are seeing a concerted upturn in, in, in Europe uh, against the backdrop of a pretty accommodative uh, central bank. Uh, earnings are growing quite nicely, and so Europe actually actually remains uh, one of our favoured markets, in fact probably our most favoured market, not least because valuations are also quite attractive because of this history of, of underperformance over recent years. Yes, again, uh, the European Central Bank has been playing a lot in this because it's still pumping money into the, uh, um, the economy through QE. Uh, I want to take Europe a little bit later on in, in the discussion, uh, the UK rather, but Europe generally. Um, geographically, where are the best countries to be looking at? Well, I mean, I, I think across the board, actually, because, um, you know, the, the, the pickup in activity is pretty uh, widespread. I, I mean, we've had problems in the past with the peripheral countries, uh, and, and a few years ago I would have said really focus on the core. That's the safest place to be. But actually, if there is a generalised pickup in activity, which we're seeing, uh, then actually some of those harder-hit places, Spain, uh, Italy, you know, they might actually do quite well. Yeah. Um, how about the UK? Um, it's been an underperformer. Um, whereabouts does that fit in with regard to the, the 2018 investment? Yeah, so I've been quite negative on the UK for um, some time, really since, well, throughout 2017. Uh, uh, at the end of 2016, we had a bit of a honeymoon period after the EU referendum. That sort of petered out, and 2017 was a year in which we focused on the difficulties, the problems with the Brexit negotiations, and a slowdown uh, in growth. Um, I think going into 2018, there are, still a, there are still headwinds. I think that the Brexit negotiations will get more difficult uh, this year, so there is political uncertainty. Um, and the growth rate uh, is, is, is not great. But there are some advantages to, to the UK market. I think because of the underperformance, the valuations now look relatively attractive uh, compared to the rest of Europe and certainly compared to the US. And if you look at uh, the UK as an income generating market, the yield on UK shares is about twice twice what you can get uh, in, uh, in the other major developed markets. Do you see that being maintained because there's been a lot of uh, column inches put aside to the fact that dividends are beginning to dry up? Yes, I, I mean, I think that, you know, even if they do slow down a little bit, you know, the, the, the yield at sort of 35 to 4% is really um, very attractive in an environment in which interest rates, particularly in the UK, are going to stay fairly low. So I, I think that that's still an attraction. You say interest rates still re relatively low, they're going to stay low, but inflation is ticking up here, and that's something that surely should be of a concern to us. Yes, I'm not too concerned about uh, inflation in the UK. It has picked up, we can see here, you know, above 3%, um, the, uh, the Governor of the Bank of England has, has been writing to the Chancellor to explain why inflation has got so high. Um, but I think it's really driven by sterling. Uh, and as the year-on-year -year comparisons become more favourable, I think that, in, that inflation will actually start to fall back. In fact, we saw that this week, just a very small um, downward movement in, in inflation. Yeah. Um, how about Japanese um, equities? There's been a tremendous uh, move up in the Japanese equity markets, 26-year highs we've seen for the benchmark Nikkei 225 recently. Um, fundamentals remaining in favour of the investor there? 
I think the fundamentals look pretty good uh, in Japan. We've had this five-year process uh, of abonomics, of structural reforms, and I think we're beginning to see uh, corporate Japan being more uh, investor-friendly, do doing the right thing. I think we're beginning to see a pickup uh, in, in inflation. Deflation was a big problem in Japan. Um, so, and again, valuations similar to Europe, actually. Valuations not too, not too stretched. So uh, Japan's still positive. On. And what about emerging markets? Because that, again, has been a wonderful trade for 2017. Yes, it's difficult to generalise about emerging markets. I mean, we had some interesting uh, GDP data out of China, which suggests that the growth in China is still uh, reasonably uh, robust. China, of course, is, is you know, one of the two uh, important emerging markets. Uh, again, even within China, difficult to generalise because we've got these tech stocks, the Alibabas, the Tencents, on really pretty punchy um, ratings, delivering good earnings growth, true, but at the other end of the market we've got um, A shares, domestic A shares, which have really underperformed and are much cheaper valuations. So even though the Chinese market has done very well over 2017, I think there's still some good opportunities within China. And finally, we've got to round off by looking at the states because we've seen these continuation of record highs across the board for all the major indices. In fact, it's been a tremendous run, even in 2018 for the S&P uh, 500, 26,000 plus uh, for the Dow Industrials. Is there money still due to go into the US markets? Well, I think when you look at the risk reward in the US, uh, it's a bit asymmetric. And, and by that I mean that you know, there may be a little more upside. I think that the tax reforms have given one final leg to the, to the US market. But I think the upside is quite limited. On the other hand, you know, having risen for 10 years on the trot and having led the market and, and having risen fourfold since the bottom in 2009, I think the potential for a sizable correction in the US uh, is, is there. So I'm pretty uh, nervous nervous about uh, chasing this rally in the US. Yeah, okay, interesting. Tom, thanks so much indeed uh, for joining us. Tom Stevenson, uh, Investment uh, Director at Fidelity International. Subscribe to IG for educational content, company insight, financial analysis and expert commentary.